to relative safety. Hmm. What's that look for? Where was I? Where do you think? I was perusing this lovely little town. So many little morsels wandering around. Such an unassuming place. If we had the time, I very well might have chosen this place to... Hmm? Oh, don't be like that. I know that this place is more than safe. What with our luck in getting through the storm, I know that we've at least a few days until the Empress and her minions manage to get word of my escape to this backwater den. <laughs> Don't fret. I've spent more than enough of my time plotting my escape, and how I would spend the first few days of my newfound freedom. Originally, I had imagined I'd have been alone, and Kosovo would be left in bloody ruin. But, <laughs> it just so happened that a certain someone, a certain you, gave me an opportunity to take my leave ahead of schedule. Don't fault me for my excitement. You know how I can get. Oh, it's best that you don't give me that. Though we've seldom communicated, we both know that I've spent more than enough time getting to know you closely, and you've come to rely on me and my services to keep you alive. What could be more intimate than that? The knowledge we have of each other is more than extensive now. That doesn't excuse my behavior? And what behavior would that be exactly? My aptitude for the outdoors should come to no surprise to you. I spent years locked away in that abysmal little cell. If you should wish to fault me for my excitement to experience all that I can take in, then perhaps you're less human than I thought you were. Everyone has their demons, but enough of those repressed feelings and you'll become them. And before you answer, do you know what I've become during my incarceration? <laughs> of course you wouldn't. I've become hunger. I starve for a change in scenery. In something besides rotting stone walls and chains in the dim of candlelight. I crave anything and everything besides the confines of my former prison now. Can you really blame me for... Hmm, my dear, dear accomplice. I have taken quite a liking to you. I have saved you from death. I've kept your blood in your veins and your organs where they belong, for the most part. Quite effectively, I must add. Do not throw away the affections that I've found in myself for you. Our... our... unique set of circumstances was truly one of a kind. It would be an absolutely terrible shame to squander such an opportunity, wouldn't it? Especially when they are so far and few between. And when did you become such a bore, my dear accomplice? You fought for the Empress of Kosovo. Regrettable of a captor as they were, I'm certain that it was so exciting to work for them. So many corpses. So many wounds to suture. <laughs> You escaped with me through a hail of cannon fire from the docks and pushed through a maelstrom while being pursued by Her Majesty's own personal bloodhounds. You fought with me despite having been shot, sacrificing your own lifeblood for me and for your own survival. You're exciting and most importantly, effective, intriguing, manageable. 
Always have wondered what was going on inside that mind of yours, swimming with so many thoughts. So, what's on your mind? You've been so silent since we made our way from Kosovo. Pondering what? Me. And what is there to ponder exactly, accomplice? You want to get to know me better. What's there to know? I'm just a practitioner of the medical arts. A fervent one. But that's besides the point. I... Hmm? Well, how interesting. If you truly didn't trust me, then why would you risk your life and limb to cut me free of my chains and aid me in seeking out my freedom? The coin. And here I thought the knowledge and companionship would have been ample reward. In tandem with the small trove I had acquired over the years during my initial bout of studies. <laughs> when you run out of corpses to examine them, sometimes you just need to make your own. And even then, the dead can only provide so much knowledge, so much satisfactory information. Sometimes you need something with a pulse to practice on. Oh, no need for all that fluff, accomplice. Speak your mind. Believe me. After all those years locked away in a cell with nothing but barked orders and reprimands, any and all conversation is preferable to silence. <laughs> really? You want to see what lies under the mask? I've not removed this thing since before I was incarcerated, and I do not plan on it. Me, having something to hide. Mm, you know you've been rather insistent on having me reveal myself to you, but I'm afraid that's something that I just cannot do. You wouldn't be missing out on anything extraordinary anyways. I'm but a man on a mission. A battle-scarred one at that. You'd not enjoy what lays beneath this leather visage, I assure you. <laughs> now if we could turn our attention to more pressing matters, we have a course to plot and supplies to... You know, I grow weary of your persistence. If my jovial attitude and more than accommodating humor haven't been enough to earn your trust, then perhaps a trip to the very recent past will. The number of times you've been unconscious on my table, in my hands. Oh, and me with a myriad of ways to end your life. If I'd felt the need to be detrimental to your well-being, then I already would have harvested you for parts to add to my collection already. Seldom do the jailers question my authority when I say that someone was well beyond saving. <clears throat> I am more than capable of letting things slide to the wayside. Words aren't weapons to me. Just tools. But your words are a promise of trouble. If you can't take my kindness in what I thought was the beginning of a beautiful, mutually beneficial relationship, then take my word that I won't bring harm to you so long as you serve me. Not until I've given you your promised payment. I am a creature of my word, and you shall have what is owed to you. And that is... Accomplice? Accomplice? Oh, how messy. Seems it's about time to change your sutures and bindings. All the moving has taken its toll on your wounds. <laughs> don't touch you. If I don't, you'll bleed out sooner or later. Vital organs aren't known for specializing in holding themselves together when there's a gaping hole in them. 
Easy now. I know you distrust me. But why now of all times would I be helping you if I truly had ill will against you? Ah. <laughs> Poor things passed out. Ah, now let's see what my troublesome little accomplice's wounds are looking like. Hmm. The trauma may have been even worse than I thought. How oh, exciting. <laughs> wounds to suture. Poultices to apply. Blood to sop and flesh to disinfect. Ah. Need to remove some of this clothing. It's begun to stick to the skin. I wonder how long they were holding this in for. Hmm. Probably some time on my account. But you will die. Not on my watch. <laughs> I always forget how fragile you humans are. So hard to mend. So long to recover. And so, so easy to break. No matter what a joy it is to walk amongst you and the living to tend to your wounds. Dealing them where necessary. <laughs> Such a pretty little thing you are. Did I ever tell you when you were conscious? Probably not. Ah, and such a shame. That even after all this time we've spent together, this bond we've made, all of it was for naught, since you still see me as a threat. Though we were hunted down like strays and castaways, you are persistent in believing me to be your enemy. I wonder why that is. I've been nothing but kind and hospitable. Perhaps it's the mask. Oh, the mask. Humans enjoy seeing each other eye to eye. It forms bonds of familiarity. I learned this all those years ago, when I was still a fledgling apprentice in the medical field. Ah, those were the days. I was so naive, you know. So pure. Eh, maybe not so pure. <laughs> But I was fresh, so filled with wonder, even beyond how I am now. I believe that perhaps you and I would have been good friends back then. I was such a studious creature, and I can only assume that you too were hungry for knowledge, for purpose. I could have given you that purpose, and maybe we could have... No, oh, it doesn't matter. Fear not. You're in my care now, and so long as you'll have me, <laughs> even a little, I'll make sure that you don't die. There's so much in store for us, and after all this time alone, all I want is for us to get along. I just want to be friends, more than partners in crime, but I understand that this tall order may take time. So just give me some more time, my dear, sweet accomplice. Yeah, and that should do it. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me when you wake. You were losing too much blood and with what few tools I had, I was given no choice but to harvest some of the locals to keep you steady. But you should be on the mend now. <laughs> and in record time, their lifeblood is now yours. Their strength courses through your veins. My own as well. Such a leaky little vessel you are. Took everything to keep you alive. What a volatile creature. Hmm. It's a cold night, I think. Haven't paid much attention to temperature in a long time. You know, even though you lay here in bed as I tuck you in, resting, healing, <laughs> hating me, 
dreams of despising my secrecy. I honestly think that it's for the best. The air is so sour here. <coughs> yeah, too sour for me. I've died hundreds, thousands of times over, and my face is one I wish you to never see, accomplice. You don't deserve this scarred monstrosity gazing at you. I... Uh, uh, so soundly. Rest well, my friend. I hope that perhaps we can speak again. And when you wake someday, <laughs> perhaps, hmm, perhaps I am foolish for having dragged you into my pursuit of knowledge and of freedom from the chains that once held me. That still... That's still, in a way, holds me now. I will ponder this while you rest. And should luck have it, I'll have an answer for you before you wake. Ah. Trust me, just a little longer. I promise that I'll make you trust me, that I'll make you see the world as I see it.